Brandon Scott Jones plays Captain Isaac Higgin Toot in the CBS comedy Ghost. I'm at Noble of Gold Derby. And I want to start by asking you, Brandon, you play the same character in the same clothes, in the same place over two seasons. How do you find new things to explore and play? Oh, uh, that's good. Well, you know, I, I, you, you take what you can get, right? Like you, 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 you find the opportunities. I got a, a flashback this season and uh, I felt like it was, it would be a cool idea to see Isaac maybe with some different hair uh, at a different time in his life. So you're just sort of trying to like find these little affectations and so forth. Other than that though, I, I, I think the, the best way to describe it is like, I can tell how poorly I'm eating <laughs> because the costume gets tighter as I keep going. <laughs> and I'm like, oops, <laughs> got to rein it in. <laughs> the, uh, do you have like a, um... Like with, with ghosts and, you know, you're playing a ghost that's sort of trapped, sort of in this house, it's sort of like limitations. How do you view the stakes? Because there's sort of like very important, but also like there aren't a whole lot of consequences now that your character's dead. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think like I I I, I um, talked to Joe Port and Joe Wiseman after the season. And one of the things I, I said to them and we were just sort of chatting about how things went and everything. And I was I, I said that everything that my character does or everything that I do as an actor, as Isaac, is sort of based around the idea of will this be the thing that gets me to move on and I think that is the way I try to keep the stakes alive which is if the ultimate goal here is for me to sort of go on to whatever the next phase of this existence is then I think all of almost like selfishly a little bit all of those actions are derived from that so I think you know obviously the day-to-day -day things or some things are going to feel bigger and some things are going to feel smaller but when characters are sort of confronted with either lies or truths that they have to sort of come come to, I think uh, that's where I, I sort of go, which is just the idea, is this going to be the thing that releases me from, from this purgatory that I think he also has to admit that he kind of enjoys just still being there. Yeah, like, that's interesting. Yeah. You've got that whole, like, stakes, but then you've also got... Like if if Isaac gets sucked off, the impact that it'll have on Nigel, or if Nigel gets stuck sucked off, the impact that would have on I like you know like sort of there's the stakes in that sense where if someone gets sucked off, then what's like it'll have an impact on the other ghosts and the other characters. Yeah, I think that it, it's interesting to like still be able to have that even when you feel like oh, okay, life and death in when you're living is are like the two biggest dichotomies of risk and all of uh, and, and stakes. But I think with this, it's sort of, oh, now you have the chance to affect the outside world through this living person. So that's great. But then two, if he does move on, which is this thing you can imagine he's wanted since second one of, of dying. Yeah. Um, if he does get a chance to move on, then yeah, like w will it affect other people or how would it affect, um, how would it affect uh, him if somebody he loves or just interacts with every single day moves on? Mm -hmm. Now- yeah. In this sort of ensemble comedy where you got so many sort of characters and you're all sort of limited to to the well, most of you, the dead the dead ones of you limited this space, how important is trust amongst the ensemble in creating that comedy? Um it's it's paramount. Paramount plus. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it is, it is, it is yeah. <laughs> Trust is Paramount Plus. That will be the, the headline of this. No, I um no, it it's it's the most it's 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 uh... It's the thing that I love the most about the show, which is you spend all of this time building these relationships off camera with these people and that you start to get this understanding that even if you're, you know, there's going to be days where you sort of walk off set and you're like, God, did I really shit the bed in that scene? And people are sort of like, no, 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 you're, you're, you were okay. And I also, do, I feel that pressure is, is gone because on days where I'm not maybe doing what I want to be doing, you know, they're lifting me up. And so I have that trust that the rest of the cast is just killing it. And I'm so lucky to be a part of it. It's sort of like, you know, we've talked about this before in the past, mm -hmm. but of like improv comedy, one of the things that you, I, that's where I, my, my background is, 
one of the things you learn at very, very beginning is try to make others look good and put your trust in others because they're doing the same to you. And that hopefully creates some sort of like really great safety net for you. Mm. Can you think of like a moment in sort of season two where you had that sort of moment of trust between some of the actors in the show? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's um, I would say there, there was a, a couple, a, a couple little different moments where mainly where Isaac was sort of like first trying to like figure out like how to take that next step with Nigel and wondering, like, I, I, I was sort of wondering, I was like, was I leaning too heavy into like the melodrama a bit? And this is from like that technical standpoint, but I was like leaning too heavy into the melodrama a bit. Was I still trying to find that comedy and trying to strike that balance? And I, I know that there was just a couple times where uh, I, I, you know, pulled a few actors aside and was like asking them questions. I was like, hey, how do you think I should go about doing this? And then talking with the directors too, like, what do you feel is the right move here? And we all sort of trusted each other to find the right balance that, you know, we weren't going to cut to like a silly joke right after I've had, so I, after I've like gone a little too hard in the scene or something like that. So trying to find that balance has been really, really helpful. And it's the thing that I, again, I think makes this show so special is, is the, the, we all seem to really enjoy being an ensemble. And I think that's the best quality of it, but definitely like the Christmas episodes, there was a two part Christmas episode where I was like kind of going through this whole little roller coaster. And I really felt like I relied on, on my, my cast and they came through for me in, in a big way of making this feel grounded and in, in real and, and then the creators and everything like that too, but with the ensemble for sure. Mm. Did, uh, did you have like a favorite scene or moment in season two? Oh, um, <laughs> I had a, let's see. Yes, I really enjoyed. So Alberta and Isaac get to play detectives uh, in one episode. And that was really fun because it was almost like we got planted in one room and we shot our entire episode in one day. And um, we it was really fun to spend that amount of time with Danielle, just the two of us trying to like figure out how to play this, this uh, these like inept detectives who were going way overboard with their intensity. Uh, but that was to me, like, that was definitely like a really, really, really big highlight. I'm sure there's a thousand other ones that I'm forgetting too. Um, not for any other reason than that's just one that stuck out in my brain right there. But yeah, that was, that was really, really, really fun. Yeah. Do, do you have a favorite, uh, do you have like, wh what made you laugh the most this season? Oh, there, <laughs> uh, a couple, a couple things, uh, Let's see. Uh, I, I, there's a, there's a uh, deleted, not a deleted scene, but a blooper that the world will never see that Richie and I had during the Christmas episode again. Uh, that makes me laugh so hard. I wish I could describe it, but it's almost like imagine like the most kind character, like Richie, making the most dirty, disgusting joke you've ever imagined, and we. We, I, I didn't know he was going to, we had talked about it off camera thinking that that was going to be a fun thing. And then he decided to do it during the, uh, during one of the takes and it made me laugh straight for like a minute. And then the other one would be, there's a scene where a woman is sexually eating a pork chop, I think. And all the ghosts are sort of like, at least the dude ghosts are watching her and we all have different reactions. And if you're going to put just a reaction camera on somebody, giving it to Devin Long and watching him just like wrench his face into some sort of like horny and maniacal <laughs> look was so funny. It was hard to to keep it together. So it was, it's those moments where you just like, you're not sure what the other person is going to do that kind of like really just like sparks the laughter in me for sure. Mm. And in moments like that do you like i know some of them you can't use and you've got to do yeah. another take but like in in moments like that do you like does that help you find things in your oh character God, as yeah. well like yeah yeah I, I think there's like i mean like i think any like improv is more a tool than it is for like saying something funny and i think even if we improvise something on camera most of the time it's not going to make it because what we're coming up with on the spot isn't going to be a better line than what was like thought over and 
written and the tires were kicked on and so forth and has a, a purpose. Uh, but I do think it allows you as a performer to maybe discover a new way of going about something or a new way of feeling about something or, or finding a new fun dynamic between two characters. Like I don't get a chance to perform too often with Richie Moriarty who plays Pete, but we got a chance to do a few scenes together, especially in the first half of the season too. And uh, it was really cool just to see what we were bringing I don't know what the dynamic was like between the two of us and and whether it continues that way or not I think the next time we get into a scene together we're going to have something to pick back up off of even if it if it's something that never made it on air and I guess that like improv can help build that trust oh, too yeah like a hundred percent can you think of something that you improvised in season two? Ooh, uh I improvised in season two. Uh, I, I, I can, there was a scene where I was at a dinner table and pretending to be, I don't know if this made it in, but um, where I was just overly interacting with these people, pretending that I was a part of their dinner. And it was really fun just to see this, this character like Isaac just, or I had fun at least doing it. I mean, maybe the editors didn't like it, but like I had fun just like trying to be this like, um, you know, head of the table, like really like magnanimous, like human being. And so magnetic, excuse me, human being, uh, despite the fact that none of them could see me. Uh, so that was one. And then I guess like an, another, I think I improvised a line in this most recent or last episode about buying Rhode Island. I think I improvised that line. I, I'm not, sometimes I don't remember. So, yeah. <laughs> but I remember I was like, oh, I think I'm surprised they kept that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I realized speaking of, um, Rose McIver in season one, I think she did an online UCB course to help yeah. with her like improvisation skills and stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, um, it was really it was really cute that she did that. It was really yeah. it was really fun. Yeah. And it's and you're not the only one, but like you're one of the members of the cast that has a more like extensive improv background. Have you seen that sort of like um sort of that trust and stuff like build over like the two seasons with the guys who have a bit more improv background and those who may be new to newer to comedy and newer to improv in the cast as well? Yeah, well, like uh, Devin is a great example who um, to me comes up and just says like emotionally these things from from Thorfinn that are so funny and consistently like kill me. And then I find out that he has no real improv training and you're sort of like, wow, that's that's brilliant how naturally you're great at it. And I think what's really nice and what improv and those of us who have maybe some experience in doing it is allowing and giving that space to others to have those moments where even if something, you know, somebody has an idea or somebody wants to try something really quick, we're always all game to sort of give them the avenue to do it. And I think that when you, again, going back to trust, which is the best thing you can have when you're with a bunch of actors as having each other's back. And I feel like I know that when I'm there, they all have mine and I hope they feel that I have theirs because it's, it's awesome. Yeah. And I really like a big part of improv, like at least um, from what I understand, I don't have the experience or anything that you do, but like learning is a big part of it. Like it's all about learning. So you've got to give people the freedom to be able to learn and listen and respond. Yeah. And it's about that safety net. A hundred percent. You have to be, I, I think that's the thing is improv in general is it's a collaborative tool. And if you you want to nurture that, because ultimately that, even again, if it's not the words that are coming out of our, our it's the bond that's coming out, hopefully on screen, especially in an ensemble show like this. Another moment in season two, in the season two finale, actually, Isaac proposes to Nigel in a really like touching scene. Uh, what did that scene mean to you and how do you approach that? I, um, that scene, um, great question. Um, that scene was sort of a last minute surprise to uh, me and John and um, our director. And we sort of uh, got it together very quickly and tried to make an understand, uh, trying to trying to understand how and what what the mechanics of it were going to be and so forth. And I think uh, 
the way I sort of, I had to try to find that reason where he's like struggling with just like cohabitating with this guy. And the fact that he goes all, all the way to proposal is really funny to me because it's almost like he's gone a 180. He's like tried more, he, he he's over course corrected. And I think in his brain as like a revolutionary war era man, the concept of living together means marriage and i think so he's it, that's a great example i think of where the center of his venn diagram is of like old timey values and current situations sort of like intersect and so it was sort of this idea of like fine you want to live together this is how we're gonna have to do it mm, yeah. yeah now this ghost is not your first experience with sort of post-death television you <laughs> yeah you were in the good place. You played, I think it was John. Is that your character's name? Yeah, in the John. Good place? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in that show, you got to uh, work with a Darcy Carden, who mm -hmm. you did some work with in improv back in New York. Uh, yes. New York days. What was like that like? And particularly like uh, one scene that sort of comes to mind is when you were playing the Pictionary game and that Pictionary oh, yeah. shoot. Um what was that like working with her after going from like sort of the basement in New York comedy club <laughs> to, to working with her on the good place? Oh, that's so, it's so funny. You mentioned that scene specifically too, because that was a night. I mean, first of all, Darcy is my like best friend. I love her so much. We performed together for my God, 15 years now. And we still do when we get the chance. And I think we're going to be doing some improv shows over the summer as well. Uh, and I, I would say that night specifically, I remember shooting because we both sort of looked at each other and it was this crazy moment where we remember like doing tech rehearsals for a sketch show that we don't know if anybody was gonna come see. And it was two o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday and we're in the basement underneath the grocery store trying to see if this joke is gonna work or if that joke's gonna work or if this lighting cue is good. And to have that moment and that sort of um, I don't know, just like relationship transported to the coolest thing, which is the Universal City lot. And, you know, you're shooting outdoors on a Friday night in with like the funniest people in the world on one of the best TV shows. I was like, I cannot believe it. It was definitely like a pinch me moment. And I think it was that type of thing where we were, we were talking, it was like, if you were to describe what success Oh, that's I don't want to sound like glib. I don't want to sound like cocky or whatever. But like if you were to describe what a successful feeling is, the fact that I got to do that show at that moment with that friend with Darcy was it's like everything I could have asked for. If I were when I started, when I started this this whole like journey, I was like, I just want to perform with people I love. I just want to do comedy with people. I mean, I'll do other things too. <laughs> I'm flexible, but like, I just want to do, you know, these things with these people I love. And it, it was, um, it was just a great moment. Did I black out? I might've blacked out because I was talking for an hour. I'm sorry if I did. <laughs> did, you get, did, you get a bit, did you get a bit teary, Brad? I did, I yeah. did. I was very cool. There's actually, and I don't know if she still has it, or, but I think we, made like a video that night or she had to make a video for somebody else and she was like hey do this with me and we just were kind of like giving advice I guess to like people just starting out I can't remember what the you'll have to forgive me but there is a moment where like we both sort of at the same time like realized like oh this is this is what you're aiming for do it do the thing you love with the people you love and you will be rewarded no matter where you are because we loved it when we were doing it for free in in the basement you know and it was just really cool well I, I i interviewed her for the last season of the good place and i asked oh, yeah. her for her three top moments of the good place and that pictionary scene with you was one of them she oh said my God. Just, yeah yeah that's which is why i need to ask about that one. Oh, that's great oh good oh that's so nice that's so cute oh yeah, yeah. she uh said just uh go to like even just because it was a night shoot and they're rare and you went to go get snacks and just got teary about your time oh yeah back in there was back, like, these, yeah. like brazilian bowls like i don't know what was happening but there, whatever that food truck was that night it was just like a great it was like perfect yeah. weather it was great i and mean yeah. Just to quickly finish off, Brandon, on the ghost set, who's the best table tennis player? 
Oh God. Um, his, Brandon Kang is our first team PA. Okay. He is excellent. He's fantastic and an excellent player. He and I uh, had many, many a good match together. Uh, and then I think after that, Trent O'Donnell is a very, very good player as well. We have some really good, we have some, I, we're getting great. You know yeah. what I mean? I think collectively as a, as a people, as a cast, as a company, as a crew, I think we could enter a, a tournament, hopefully yeah. within the next two seasons. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, well, if, Go if Ghost does it, it's working out very well, Ghost, but it doesn't work out, you can start up a table tennis team and that could. <laughs> and you know what? And that is, that is my parents like worming their way into my brain is like always have a very secure backup plan. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Professional table tennis. Let's do it. I love it. Brandon, thanks so much for talking with us today. All the best of luck for Emmys with Ghost. People watching this interview can go to goldderby.com. And Brandon, it's always so much fun to talk comedy with you. Oh my God, it's the best. I loved it. Thanks so much, Matt. That was awesome. 